Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Tucker and Crowley Report. I'm Mike Crowley, and I'm joined by Franklin Tucker, longtime editor of The Belmontonian, which you can find at belmontonian.com. So, Franklin, let's talk about the MBTA community plan, or should I say plans? That's right. You know, um, if you remember, uh, the MBTA communities is a state initiative that basically tells towns, a lot of towns, that have uh, MBK um, transportation hubs, that uh, they should um, uh, basically change their zoning, uh, residential zoning, so you can build more zone, uh, more housing near those hubs. Um, it would it basically would just increase the, the amount of uh, uh, two-family, three-family, four-family, and, and multi-story buildings. Right. Um, uh, now you think that oh it was it passed you know it was uh, created by Rachel Heller of the Housing Trust and Roy Epstein of the Select Board. No, uh, they they no, really. Wait, they, Franklin. They didn't create the <laughs> the entire initiative. No, but, no, no, no. That was by the state. The right. state did the entire. They did no. the Belmont. They they, they created the Belmont map as that, as part of the MBTA advisory communities uh, committee. Mm -hmm. um, that, that was appointed here in Belmont. Yeah, the advisory committee. Yes. yes. And um, uh, so th that was d developed a, few, uh, a month ago or, or, or a few months ago. And a, and a lot of meetings. Um, Very uh, much and, so. And it, was a, it was a tough haul for everybody who wanted to, to, to have their say in that in the making of the map. And that map is now going to have to go to the state. The state will check it off. And basically it says that, you know, it's, it's, it will allow, not require, but allow uh, about 1,600 um, uh, units of housing in that area, in, this, in that uh, close by area. Now, now, now procedurally, Franklin, um, before it goes to the state, um, it, it has to be uh, approved by town meeting. No, but but first it has to be approved by the planning board and, right. and the select board. And so what's happening in that regard? Well, it's gone to the planning board. Right. And um, it, it, no one really thought it was going to have any you know heavy lifting. Uh, but, you know, there, there was going to be questions asked. And, like every anything else that goes before the planning board, because this is zoning changes, which is very important. But now what we found is that uh, a lot of people want to have the, uh, a second say in this. And um, uh, one was Roy Epstein, who, who um, pre presented a second map, <laughs> an approved map. No, but but um, didn't didn't the um, the planning board um, come up with its own map first? It, um, it it did in a way, but they haven't approved it. They haven't really gone through it yet. Okay. You know, so it, it's, that's a process in itself. But what we saw at the last uh, uh, planning board meeting was that uh, there is a, a, a second, um, uh, uh, there, there are people who are saying, we're not against, we're not against uh, housing, you know, this is not like, like some communities, like over in Canton, where they said, no, we don't want that much housing. Uh, there is a group uh, uh, who are uh, pro-commercial um, real estate. And they're saying that uh, they don't, they're not opposed to housing. They're just saying there are a limited number of large parcels that can be used for commercial. And everyone counts. You know, they want to make sure that they have the ability not to uh, push some of those parcels away. Specifically, two. There's two big parcels. One is the Frank French parcel, which is along the railroad tracks. Right. And uh, the other one is the Pure Co, which is near the high school, which is real across the street from high, from high school fields, I should say. And and they're saying that you know these are very important because you know Belmont wants to increase their commercial uh, real estate uh, inventory, and um, so they're they they want to they want a second map. So there there are communities well, like Needham, um, which which are going to have two maps that mm -hmm. go before their planning board, their, their select board, and their town meeting. And, um, and that'll be a choice, you know, if you want to uh, pick one or pick the other. Many people are saying, no, please don't let us have two maps. This is just going to cause controversy. You know, maybe both of them will fail. So let's have a compromise. Now, the people who, who developed the MBTA maps that went to the planning, um, you know, uh, which is, you know, housing uh, rich, um, is like the housing trust and Rachel mm -hmm. Heller, who uh, helped? Who was a co-chair of, of that committee? Mm -hmm. She's basically saying, "Yeah, let's 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 talk," but she's not saying um, that she's not going to give up. It doesn't appear that she will give up uh, uh, um, 
what this what the what, what the map they produced they'll add to it or, or you know they, they don't want to have a brand new map that's just going to cause everyone to stay in Belmont for the summer <laughs> well so so <laughs> so Franklin let's talk about what happened at the planning board meeting this week um, when um, um, another map was presented by by Roy well actually he wasn't there but, that's right but um, <laughs> But it was purported to uh, another map that had been purported to have been developed by by Roy Epstein mm -hmm. was was presented, and, and then you got into this discussion That's right. ab about um, you know the need to preserve commercial space mm -hmm. if we're going to meet our commercial development goals, um, in including those large parcels. Um, mm -hmm. But um, so. So where do we go from here? I mean, it basically comes to um, these two groups, and um, I think it's it's fair to say that both groups are, uh, you know, they, they do have their natural um, proponents, you know, the, the leaders who who move forward with what they're going through. One will be Rachel Heller, uh -huh. you know, she would want as much housing as possible, and, and she wants to protect the map that took so long to make, you yeah. know. And uh, the other one is Elizabeth Dion, who has who ran on a uh, on the for the select board on on commercial real estate. Basically, you know, we need more commercial. Um, uh, um, you know, we need more commercial uh, real estate because we can't have a ninety five percent real estate in, uh, inventory, which you know means that you know the, the all the you know any kind of tax increases coming from resident residents rather than you know. Uh, a fair portion of it coming from commercial. Well, so let me ask you this, Franklin. Um, you know, a number of communities, including Watertown with the Arsenal Complex and um, uh, Somerville with the Assembly Row Complex, have, of course, you know, much, much larger types of projects involving a great deal more acreage, but they have pursued very successful mixed development. Um, um, and I that includes housing as well as commercial. And um, um, is that something that is potentially on the table here in Belmont? Of course it is. You know, no one's no one's saying that they're they're going to blow up, you know, a, a one of the maps, you know, the MPK map, uh, because they can't get one. You know, they, they, there is, you know, it's limited just to residential and not residential and commercial. I think we see great examples. Uh, you know, anywhere, you know, everywhere in Belmont, you know, where, um, um, you know, you know, in Belmont and the surrounding communities where this works, there is a caveat there, but uh, though, um, and that is that you will find residents, um, especially near those those hubs where the where the where that new zoning is going to be who are just going to be opposed to anything over three stories. And, and you know, when you're looking at commercial and, and, and residential, they have to go pretty high. They have to go like four or five, six stories, but, you know, to make it profitable and also to get the, the number of housing that, we, that, you know, that can be done in those areas. So you may see a wild card come in November where, where you have communities such as Waverly Square, where, where people are already, you know, very um, concerned about why so much of this, uh, uh, zoning changes happening in their community. Are they getting dumped on to 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 accept commercial and residential and six story, you know, uh, buildings? So, so one more thing I want to ask you about this, Franklin, and that's that you know November isn't very far away. And we we have we have competing visions of what's going to be put before town meeting. I mean, do we have enough time to settle this? Yes, you do. And um, it, but it does take people getting together and, and really um, working together. Now, can these two groups naturally just come together, you know, a phone call away or do, do they need something like a select board or a planning board to to bring them together? And I think that the natural uh, 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 group that would, would could, could bring these two groups together is the planning board, you know, because it's now in their hands. Let's let's bring it together. Uh, I don't know what the urgency is on the planning board. You know, are they going to be staying over the summer? It's always nice. In, Belmont's always nice in the summer, but not do, not for meetings. Um, so, okay. but but like you said, it's it's we're five months away. You know, it's it's around the corner. All right, Franklin. Well, we'll see what happens. I'm sure there will be lots of opportunities, hopefully, for public input. Um, so. Let's talk about, um, town, well, town meeting has wrapped up. Let's talk about 
what happened. Let's talk about the rank. It survived. <laughs> it so, survived with a $2.25 million supplemental budget. Uh, you know, the budget itself um, uh, was a little, uh, a little of this and a little of that. It received a, a state earmark uh, to purchase a CO2 refrigeration system. Uh, it got, state of the art? Yeah, very much so. And very clean. You know, um, uh, no... Um, uh, environmental uh, impact when you when you do have a CO2 uh, refrigerant. Um, then uh, they went to a, state, a, a town account, which was the... Um, um, the Kendall Fund. The Kendall Fund. Uh, took a, a good chunk of that. And they also... Um, uh, and this was the, the one part that really uh, helped uh, pass this. And that was using investment income from bonds that were sold by Belmont. You know, uh, the uh, stock market and bond market has been very good in the last year. And the town received a, 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 a nice windfall. So, uh, you know, if only we'd invested in Nvidia. Oh, that would have been great. Everybody's saying that. Can't buy it now. <laughs> um, so, um, but you know, the, the rink passage wasn't a, it wasn't a big surprise, and I think that there was a number of reasons for that. Number one, no new debt. You know, so it's not going to the uh, to the taxpayers. Um, there were there were. Uh, it wasn't a really a large amount of money. Yeah, I know two point two five million dollars is two point two five million dollars, but it's not like they they, they had a budget of of thirty million and they were seeking ten. Yeah. Now, now, and, and, but there was one more, and that there was no real opposition. Now, but there, but there there was there was some concern because um, oh sure so, yeah. some people ex expressed. Um, uh, worry about opportunity cost, and and by making this choice to to use the funds for the rink, are, are we are we depriving the community of other essential needs? So you, uh, you you can make you can make that argument about everything and anything. You know, what's the opportunity cost of of redeveloping a park when you should be uh, when you could put the money into uh, putting a new roof on the on, on the chenry? You know. There, there are so many. There's so many. The opportunity cost is is a is a nice um, uh, economic uh, economic um, uh, you know problem, a quiz a quiz question. But <laughs> in the real world, you know, you got to make you, you just got to you got to put the hammer down. You, you know, opportunity cost. Yeah, let's discuss that as a theory. But uh, let's, no, it's let's more than theory, Franklin. But no, but really. we won't we yeah, won't prolong real, we won't prolong world. that. Um, and then and then there there was some. Concern expressed by um, um, a member of the Energy Committee, Roger Rubel, about um, the fact that um, you know something that that had really been sold to the town was that this project would have solar panels, and and um, the money that was being voted on did not provide for solar panels. It provided for other things that that uh, the the Rink Building Committee was arguing. Were, were more essential. And, and, you know, and I think, uh, you know, Roger, uh, you know, is, is, a, is a big proponent of, of solar panels. Um, and um, so that wasn't unusual, I know. Um, but as one person said, and said for about the last month, you know, you've got to have a building to put solar panels on, you know. So uh, if you don't have that building, you're not going to have solar panels to begin with. Um, and, you um, and it really was, it really turned out that where I think the, the, anybody who was going to join that, if there was any kind of group of people who were going to join, uh, agree with uh, Roger, uh, I think they were placated by saying, by people, by the building committee saying, the, this is going to be solar panel ready. We, we can go up there once we get, if we get the money for it, we can, you know, we can go up there and just do it quickly and it'll be done. And they were also saying that if the contingency wasn't used, um, it it yeah, could, it could help pay for could solar panels. Kind of cost. Yeah. And then Patrice Garvin, the town administrator, also made the commitment that she would do everything that she could to try to find the money for yeah. solar panels. That's we'll, nice. we'll see what happens <laughs> with that. Right. Maybe maybe we can get a, a nice loan from the uh, from the biggest manufacturer of uh, of solar panels. All right. So the the other big issue um, that that was part of the wrap up of town meeting, or at least some people expected it to be a big issue. Maybe it kind of maybe the sparks kind of fizzled. I was going to just say that <laughs> tasers. Tasers, right? And I think I think there are people who wanted to talk about tasers. A number of reasons to talk about tasers. Number one, uh, we're, we're, uh, that was one was financial. You know, we're talking about uh, Axion 
Exxon, um, uh, the manufacturer of tasers, and who they, hold the copyright on that. They, um, they've they've moved to a model, a lease model. That's so, right. So yeah. that if the police department, well, police departments can, can no longer purchase tasers. They have to. They're locked into five year leases. At, and, and at which point. And the reason for that is because it's a monopoly. You know, yes. there, there's there's just a, I believe just one, I believe there are one or two people who, who make this kind of uh, machinery. And uh, and in Massachusetts, you have to deal with them. You know, they, 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 they've, they've really locked up the uh, market. So this is what a monopoly looks like. Um, and um, uh, so, you know, people are justifiably concerned, you know, can we get this on a, che on a cheaper basis? Uh, again, it's something that um, uh, you know, four hundred. I think it was the total forty forty thousand a year. Uh, I think it was like for the five years, wasn't it four hundred forty thousand dollars or something like that? In that included training and everything else, and um, so. Um, but we actually didn't get into money at town meeting. It, the, the, the 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 issue before town meeting was so solely the. Um, yeah, the ability to enter into a five-year contract. That's right. The scope was was simply yes or no to the contract, and that kind of um, uh, limited that. There were some people who also want to talk about tasers as a, as a law enforcement uh, equipment. Uh, do we really need it? You know, uh, and 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 police chief uh, um, Isaacs, um, McIsaac, McIsaac, uh, McIsaac, I should say, um, um, made a good point of, of making examples of where you know a taser really. Uh, de-escalated a, a, a possibly a, a, a really a tragic incident. Yeah. Yeah. So um, I think it was one of those things where the, the police were going to, number one, they weren't asking for extra money. They were going to use it out of their own budget. So it's not, it, it, it wasn't as if we were asking for a lot of money. You know, they, they were going to use their own money. And, they, and, and it looks like it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's an adequate deal. All right. So, um, Franklin, Town meeting wrapped up, but town meeting is coming back. Right. Uh, we have a special town meeting on June 26th. Tell, tell us about that. It's going to be about the uh, traffic uh, mitigation uh, for the McLean um, um, uh, development. Yeah. The two developments that are that are in the future. Um, this sounds. Uh, it's a, it's it's a little. Um, basically, it's a. Basically, what the the, the, the town has uh, come up with a, a, a plan that um, seems to you know help the developer uh, because the developer says that he can't get any financing because of these really restrictions on on, on traffic numbers and parking yeah. and, and they can limit parking if you if you go past that number. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, the town has come up with it with basically a deal, and what, what, we're, what we're waiting for is that uh, because it was uh, it needed to be done quickly. There wasn't any any uh, real public process. No, so, no public hearing, but but now there will be a public hearing that's right, before on the, town meeting on the seventeenth Monday. Uh, there will be a public meeting and then uh, a, a total remote um, uh, special town meeting on the twenty sixth. Um, talking to people um, about this, um, there's no real campaign to um, you know support what some of the neighbors want, which would be a delay and then look for even more, you know, more things uh, that you can get out of this. That's not so, so we don't expect it to be a, a tremendously controversial town meeting. No, I think it's going to be quick and hopefully technically uh, <laughs> technically, <laughs> technically OK. This is going to be a, a quite a, um, a feat if they actually pull this off, because you're going to have to have uh, you're going to look at the uh, meeting at, uh, via Zoom, and you're going to be doing votes on a different system. They're going to have to be coordinated. I don't know how they're going to do it, and especially when we have only um, one or two people in the IT department in the town. All right. Well, we'll have to see how that goes. But we we are um, um, moving into um, so. So it is expected that town meeting will pass the um, um, the, the new traffic. Um, I think the agreement is pretty much, uh, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a compromise uh, among the developer and the town. I and, think and, you know we're not talking about um, uh, great swaths of land and, and huge amounts of money. It's basically a couple of traffic lights and uh, 
yep. taking away the 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 the, the, the mitigation, uh, taking away some of the mitigation that the developer had to do. And the the, the developer has to have this locked down by the end of the month. That's or, right. Or the um, the deal is the, for the development is potentially off. That's right. And if that deal goes bad, ba you know if that deal uh, deal goes bad. And remember, this deal was approved by town meeting an earlier town meeting by like a huge amount, two hundred and sixty or two hundred and fifty to zero or something like that. Um, the developer, McLean and the developer, can build whatever they want. And right. that's something that the housing trust also took a long time to, to pare down what, they, what the original thing was going to be um, developed at, at that site. Okay, so Franklin, um, let's talk about sports ah, before finally. we wrap up. That's right. When we are wrapping up sports uh, this Saturday, uh, Belmont Girls uh, Rugby will be in Milton, Massachusetts at Curry College. Um, they will be playing. They will be. Uh, they will be fighting for their sixth straight uh, state championship in uh, rugby uh, against Weymouth. Weymouth is a very good team. Uh, took Belmont um, uh, a long time to, to beat them in the, fir in the first game of the year. This should be a really exciting game. It's um, um, it's going to be the powerhouse Belmont against uh, a real up and coming coming team. So uh, if you can get there, it's at two thirty. It's at like. You can get tickets online, and they're like 10, 10 bucks, I think. What's the date again? It's uh, this Saturday, oh. which is the 15th. Okay. And uh, then we also have, uh, in the final uh, event uh, that we, are, we could be looking at, is that we have two young ladies who will be running in the um, uh, 3,000 meter championships at the U.S. Track and Field Championships for under 20, meaning the younger many younger uh, young ladies. And when will this be and where? That will be, uh, as we are speaking, uh, this is Wednesday the 13th, uh, Thursday the 13th. They will be um, running uh, at 9.30 Pacific Coast time, so around 12.30 our time on Friday, 12.30 okay. in the morning. And their names, of course, is uh, are Ellie Shea, who is one of the great runners from Belmont, and uh, Dana Lear, who is a junior at the, at the high school. And um, they're both qualified to, to run this race. And if you qualify, if you meet the qualifying times, you'll then be uh, you'll then be qualified. The, the, the two young ladies will be qualified to go to the under twenty world championships. And that's that's an incredible. Um, uh, Achievement, and um, I know that um, uh, Ellie Shea is looking at the uh, 3000 as her as her event. As she actually ran a day ago, and she finished fourth in the 5000 meters, but she qualified, so she she has qualified for a slot for the under 20 world championship. So uh, congratulations, to, congratulations to them. And we wish them uh, uh, the best of luck. That's right. I'll be up at 1230. Oh, okay. I'll be looking at them. All right. Well, thank you, Franklin. Um, as always, you can find more of Franklin's reporting at Belmontonian.com. That's all for this week. We will see you next time.